Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.5 of John Townsend's A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, this problem states that, um, well, it wants us to find the amplitude of a particle that is in state plus n um, with a spin component of y equal to h bar of 2. So, essentially, it wants us to find, you know, if our state, of, if our particle state is this, um, what is the amplitude? Um, of finding it in the state uh, plus y essentially and then once we find the amplitude it wants us to find the probability and that's part a then part b is is basically the opposite it says let's say our state is in plus y what is the amplitude that we find it in the uh, state plus n and then find the probability from the amplitude that you find the particle in the plus n state when it starts in the plus y state so, again, we have our state plus a defined here, cosine theta of 2 plus e plus e to the i phi sine of theta of 2 times the state minus e, where plus e minus e are our basis states. Plus y, this state is it's derived in chapter 1 of the book, so if you don't know how this state is obtained, I suggest reading chapter 1, um, but it's essentially 1 over root 2 plus e plus i over root 2 minus e. Um, which gives us a 50% probability of either getting plus C or minus D when, uh, if you measure the Z component of the spin of this state. So now let's just find this probability amplitude. So we have, we take the uh, bra ket inner product here of plus N and plus Y. That'll give us the probability amplitude of finding the particle in state plus N and the state plus Y. So take the bra plus y, so we have 1 over root 2 all times uh, plus z minus i minus z, and that's a minus sign because a bra vector is um, the conjugate uh, transposed form of the vector. So conjugating meaning flip uh, the complex exponent, like the complex numbers um, signs and then transposing. Anyways, that, that'll be explained later. So <laughs> that's how you write the bra version of plus y. Then we multiply that by plus n. So, which is just this up above. Now FOIL that out. Remember that uh, plus z and minus z are, is a complete orthonormal set of bases so that um, plus z and minus z are orthogonal to each other. So when we do plus z and minus z together, that bra ket uh, inner product is zero and like, the same states like plus z plus z or minus z minus z, um, the inner product is one. So if you multiply that through, we get cosine of theta over two all over root two, then the inner terms cancel, and then you get the outer term, you get a minus i e to the i phi sine of theta over two all over root two because of here. So simplifying this down, what we can do is write e to the i phi using Euler's formula as cosine phi plus i sine of phi. Um, so I just rewrote this expression, factored out the one over two. So we have cosine of theta over two minus i times cosine of phi plus i sine of phi, all times sine of theta over two. And then we just distribute all these terms through and get all our terms. So we get the cosine of theta over two, then we have a minus i cosine phi sine of theta over two plus, because minus i times i is a positive one, so then we have a plus sine of phi sine of theta over two. Now just rearranging terms to write it as a complex number. We have one over root two factored out. We have cosine of theta over two plus sine of phi sine of theta over two. That's the real part of our complex number. And then we have minus i cosine phi sine of theta over two and that's the complex part of our complex number. Um, where I just kind of wrote A minus IB just to kind of like um, make it clear that this is a complex number, this is the real part, that's the imaginary part. So that is our probability amplitude. So now if we want to find the probability, we need to first take the magnitude of it and then square that magnitude. So let's do the magnitude first. The magnitude of a complex number is just the square root of its real part squared plus its imaginary part squared. So 
the magnitude of one over two is one over root two, so that just stays out. And then we have the square root of this complex number here. So the real part squared is this part. So that's cosine of theta over two plus sine of theta, sine of five, sine of theta over two, all squared. That's the real part squared, plus the imaginary part squared. So plus cosine phi, sine of, sine of theta over two, whole squared. So now we have to actually do these squares and get our terms out. So coming down, what we have is you have the one over root two up front and then the square root. So if you square this out, you get cosine squared theta over two plus two sine of phi, cosine of theta over two, sine of theta over two. That's because the two inner terms are the same. So they add together and you get two of those inner terms. Then you get the outer term uh, squared to so get plus sine squared of five times sine squared of theta over two. And that, those first three terms are the, from the real part squared. Then this last term comes from squaring the imaginary part. So we just get cosine squared of phi times sine squared of theta over two. Now, if you look out here, both of these terms have sine squared of theta over two. So what you can do is factor that out. And if you just kind of think about that, what you'll have left is sine squared of phi plus cosine squared of phi. So times the factored out sine squared of theta over two. So it's cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is one. So essentially that just factors down to one times sine squared of theta over two. But we also have a cosine squared of theta over two. So a cosine squared of theta over two plus a sine squared of theta over two is also one. So then what we get is just a one here. So how do we get this term? Well, we've used this trick before, but we have this term here, and this term is a two sine of phi cosine of theta over two times sine of theta over two. If you look up your trig identities, uh, this is, you can re-express this using a double angle formula. So uh, I think it's sine of two theta equals uh, two times cosine of theta sine of theta. So this is two times cosine of theta sine of theta where theta is just a dummy variable. In this case, our theta is theta over two. You can re-express that, that expression as sine of phi, which is just that sine of phi, times just sine of theta, because this is just sine of two theta. So sine of two theta, where theta is theta over two, two is canceled and you just get a theta. So that's where that sine of theta comes from. If you don't understand that, uh, like this is the expression, so, sine of two theta equals two times cosine of theta. I'll just write it as x actually. That way, because we're using theta, so I don't want that to be confused. So two times cosine x, sine of x. That's the double angle formula. That's what we use here to get it down to here. So that's the magnitude. Now, to get the probability, we just square that magnitude. So that's a very easy thing. So what we get for the probability of finding our state in the plus y state is one half times one plus sine of phi sine of theta. And, and that's really it, that's as simple as that. So that's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, just a lot of trig stuff. Now on the flip side, what if our particle started in the state plus y and we wanted to find what the probability of it being in the state plus n is? Well, of course, plus n is this state, which is this uh, parameterized generic state. Well, we just do the same thing. We just do the same procedure as we did before. So we write the bra version of plus n. So you can see here that I have a minus i here is have a plus i. That's because we're, we're this is the bra vector version of plus n, um, where the states here, the basis states are the bra versions, and then multiplied by plus y. So if you multiply that through, what you get is one over root two, cosine of theta over two plus i times e to the minus i phi sine of theta over two. Again, simplify this by plugging in um, Euler's formula for the e to the i phi. What you get here is cosine phi minus i sine phi because of the minus and the exponent there. Um, then you just kind of do the, the, the algebra here. So we have the cosine of theta of two here. You get, um, for the real part, you, you'll have i times minus i, which is gonna be a positive one. So for the real part, we'll have sine of phi, sine of theta of two, and then the 
the imaginary part will be minus i, uh, let's see, uh, I'm blanking out here, sorry, uh, not minus i, this is a plus. So we have a plus i cosine phi sine of theta over two. I had a small error there, so that's, that's good that I'm finding my corrections as I go. That's a plus. Um, I might have carried that minus sign throughout, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Because it looks like what I got is the same answer up here. So we might actually find a correction here. So let's keep going. Um, then, if this is our probability amplitude, then we want to find the probability. So first we need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude is just going to be 1 over root 2, the square root of the imaginary part of the real part. So. Um, just like that, that's going to be a plus there for that i. Um, so this is the real part, that's the imaginary part. Now, I don't think I need those bars there, but um, anyways, multiplying this out, we get 1 over root 2 outside, square root of cosine squared of theta over 2, and we get 2 times sine of phi cosine of theta over 2, sine of theta over 2, because those inner terms when you FOIL are the same, so you add them together to get 2 of that term, and plus sine squared of phi, sine squared of theta over 2, and then over here, we get, um, uh, yeah, I guess that should be the magnitude there, because that's, uh, anyways, you get cosine squared of phi times sine squared of theta over 2, um, and the i here, um, let me just, I should not have an i there. I don't know why I have an i there. So we're finding errors as I go. Because <laughs> this is, when you're trying to find the magnitude of a complex number, you take the square root of its real part and its imaginary part. You don't put the i in the imaginary part. You're just taking the square of that imaginary part. So. Anyways, what you get here is cosine squared of phi plus uh, times sine squared of theta over 2 with all that rest of the stuff. This term here can again be expressed using the double angle formula to reduce down to sine of phi, sine of theta. And then again, this stuff over here, if you factor that out, you'll get 1, then you get cosine squared of theta over 2. Well, sine squared of theta over 2, that's just 1 again, so we just get the 1. And we get 1 plus sine of phi, sine of theta, and the square root. Take the, take the square of that, you get 1 half times 1 plus sine of phi, sine of theta, which is exactly what we got over here. So we get the same thing. And that's about it. So it's really that simple. Um, a lot of these problems uh, do involve knowing some trig identities, and if you don't know them, um, if you have a very complicated trig expression, look up a table of trig identities and see if you can identify any identities that might help you reduce some of the stuff into a simpler form. And yeah, it's just a bunch of algebra and factoring. So lots of knowing that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is 1, and so on. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys spot any errors that I did, please let me know. Um, I'm just basing this off of my own knowledge. So I could mess something up and have the wrong answer posted. We'll see. So um, that's really it. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.